Hello, and welcome to the Farm Traveler podcast. Today, our guest is Casey Hilliard. She is the CARES coordinator with Florida Farm Bureau. The CARES program is the County Alliance for Responsible Environmental Stewardship. Casey is going to talk to us about the CARES program, the history of it, as well as what are some important best management practices in Florida agriculture that the different CARES farms practice, as well as different sponsors that the program has, and what a farmer can do to be eligible to be recognized by the CARES program. So this is a really cool episode. Really hope you enjoy it. And don't forget, this is our 10th podcast episode. So we're doing a giveaway. And if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you know of it. We are giving away a 14-ounce Yeti Rambler. So all you got to do to enter this contest is follow our Instagram page, at farm underscore traveler. Very easy to remember. And leave a review on the iTunes page. Give it four or five stars, whatever you think it deserves. And also write a review on that page. We will announce the winner during our 15th episode. That is July 3rd. So if you win, you get the Yeti right before Independence Day. So it's a great little gift. So don't forget, do the contest. Follow us on Instagram, at farm underscore traveler. And then leave a review on iTunes, and we would greatly appreciate it. Thanks, and hope you enjoy the podcast. Well, welcome to the Farm Traveler podcast, Casey Hilliard from Florida Farm Bureau. You're the CARES coordinator. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you today? Doing well. No complaints. Um, So walk us through what exactly the CARES program is at Florida Farm Bureau. Absolutely. Well, you kind of started that off. It definitely is a program at Florida Farm Bureau Federation, and this program recognizes farmers and ranchers' efforts to protect Florida's natural resources and to be good stewards of the land uh, by implementing best management practices. And CARES is actually an acronym. Uh, The acronym stands for the County Alliance for Responsible Environmental Stewardship. And our slogan, This Farm Cares, is really utilized to demonstrate to the general public that our farmers and ranchers are committed to protecting and preserving our environment across the whole state. And so when Farm Bureau recognizes a producer for the CARES program, the recipient is awarded a sign. This is customized with their farm name, but it also features our slogan, This Farm Cares. Uh, To date, only a little, just a little more than 800 of Florida's nearly 47,000 farmers and farm families have been awarded the CARES designation. And so it's a, a very prestigious honor. Farm Bureau is is really proud to have this program and, and really give that thank you to the farmer and rancher for what they're doing, um, you know, when no one's looking, no one's, you know, there to watch them on a daily basis. But these are certainly daily actions and we call them best management practices, but these are certainly daily actions they take to protect the land, the water, um, everything that's involved with being a part of the environment and and being a part of a successful farming operation. Gotcha. Yeah. um, You and I both know when it comes to the environment in Florida, it's extremely diverse. I mean, we've got um, a bunch of peanut operations up here in North Florida Mm -hmm. and down South, there's a lot of sugar cane, strawberries, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, Can you kind of walk us through the importance of best management practices in Florida ag and kind of what you've seen with some farms in the CARES program? Absolutely. And I'll kind of I'll kind of need to give you a history to help kind of bring that importance to light. And I apologize I didn't do that with the first question. But, you know, when CARES was first created, farmers and ranchers that were operating inside of the Swanee River Basin, uh, they were commissioned by the state of Florida to dial in their farming practices and really lessen the risk of nutrient runoff and overall impacts on all of the many springs that we know are located up here inside the Suwannee and Santa Fe River basins. And so, you know, considering farmers really are the first environmentalist and they interact with natural resources daily, um, they truly embrace this call to action wholeheartedly and left an impressible mark. Uh, The legislature and state agencies noticed their extensive efforts to improve upon farming practices to reduce water and nutrient use to improve water quality. And along with organizations like Farm Bureau, the Swanee River Water Management District, um, NRCS, the Department of Ag, 
this this in, the entire partnership was formed out of these efforts and the partnership was formed to say thank you to farmers and recognize their extensive efforts and it was actually an intern here at Farm Bureau that kind of coined the acronym CARES and so in 2001 the first recognition event was held and I'm very proud of the fact that today 19 years later CARES is a program that's still going strong in Florida agriculture it's grown into a statewide environmental stewardship recognition program and that same initial event held in 2001 is still celebrated today. Uh, this year's event will be on May 2nd. We have more than 700 farm families, elected officials, community members, they all gathered together. This year will be the 19th annual Swanee Care celebration and Farm Bureau now facilitates the CARES program on its own but this partnership is very much still alive in this area. But like my position is a full-time position at Farm Bureau. I conduct everything from the public recognitions to promoting the message of environmental stewardship as well as BMP implementation. So as I said, let me tie the two together. So the importance of BMPs in Florida Ag, you really can't talk about the CARES program without talking about BMPs. And so they're an integral part of a farming operation. You ask any farmer, even if they can't tell you, you know, a textbook definition of BMPs, they can show you them. And I think that's a crucial part of the Florida BMP program, which is housed under the Department of Agriculture, because our farmers have done an excellent job of incorporating so many different types of conservation practices into their operations long before anyone coined that term BMP. You know, by definition, an agricultural best management practice is a practical cost-effective action that an ag producer can take to conserve water and reduce the amount of pesticides, fertilizers, animal waste, and other pollutants entering our water resources. And so they're naturally designed to benefit water quality and water conservation while maintaining and in some cases enhancing ag production. And so it's kind of that whole term of doing more with less. It, it's BMPs bring that term to life. And so one thing that is important to me is that BMPs are developed based on research from the University of Florida and IFAS. From there, the Department of Agriculture outfits their Office of Agricultural Water Policy, say that five times fast, outfits their staff to go out into the field working one-on-one -on -one with producers to plan and implement BMP programs. And so this is where opportunities like cost share come into play. You know, so not only does the Department of Ag have programs to help producers pay for equipment used to implement BMPs, but so do each of the local water management districts as well as NRCS. And so once a producer has worked with the department to implement their planned BMPs, they then become eligible for the CARES program. And it's important to mention that you really, like I said already, you, you can't talk about CARES without talking about Florida's BMP program. And CARES is just that thank you at the end of BMP implementation uh, for a producer who has executed their BMP plan at the highest level and for not only being a good steward, but also a leader in their industry. Our farmers and ranchers they're caretakers. They caretake for nearly one third of Florida's landmass. And so with residential areas taking up another third and then our state and national forests taking up that last third, um, our farmers still make up less than one percent of our state's total population. And so by implementing BMPs, these sound environmental practices, um, they're cleaning up the water, they're protecting the land, and ultimately they do that so that we all have a better tomorrow. And so that's why I think BMPs are so important to our state's ag industry. Right. Yeah. A lot of consumers don't really understand how much farmers really care for the land. I mean, especially with um, in Florida a few months ago, we had the that big algae bloom. And I've interviewed some farmers since then, and they've said that the they've got to check their water quality for a certain um, parts per billion. And that quality is higher than... I can't remember what it was. I think it was like some bottled water or something. So the water mm -hmm. they're returning mm -hmm. back into the ecosystem is a higher quality than what we drink on a daily basis. And a lot of people are just throwing them under the bus. So 
Yeah, I think it's fascinating that a lot of people don't understand just how much farmers actually care for the environment and what they're doing on a day in and day out basis to not only produce a lot, but also protect Florida's environment. Absolutely. Um, so walk us through what exactly does a farmer have to do to be eligible to get recognized by the CARES program? Absolutely. Great question. So a farmer first must enroll and implement the BMPs that fall under the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Inside of the department is that Office of Ag Water Policy, and they really govern the BMP program. And so that's step one. Step two is once they've implemented their plan BMPs and they've accomplished their goals, you know, maybe it's relating to reducing water or nutrient use or improving local water quality, whatever their goals are, a staff member from the department works with that producer one-on-one. -on -one. They'll come out, they'll evaluate, and it really is to simply check and have that conversation to see how well their BMP plan worked. Um, I've seen this verification done firsthand, and it really is nothing more than a checklist and a meaningful conversation about how well did the plan BMPs work? What's your next step from here? And so what I like and appreciate about BMPs is they're customized to each individual operation because no two farms in our state are alike. And so our farmers, they're really resilient in the fact that they're ready to take on the next opportunity. You know, maybe this time they worked on reducing water and chemical use, maybe now they look at an area of their farm where they can improve water quality, or maybe they're doing both and they're just going to elevate. Um, you know, they're always wanting to work on something on or around their property. And so as soon as that verification is completed, the department's technicians, their staff, um, they get a hold of us. They get, they call me personally and say, Hey, I've got this farmer I think they're a great representative of your program, and I'd like to nominate them this year or next year for the CARES Award. And so from there, then I communicate back to the producer and let them know that they've been nominated, and then we kind of just go through that whole process. So I call it the three-step process in terms of how difficult it is to get the CARES Award. It's really not that difficult as long as you're already enrolled in the BNP program, and if you're not, then it's a perfect opportunity to explain, you know, that the department's BMP program is voluntary. It's not regulated. And so it's a great incentive for producers to really get involved. And like I like to share with them, there's all these cost share programs available, not just from the department, from other agencies as well, that just helps them get their foot in the door and, you know, hopefully can save them some money while working to protect the environment. So it's a win-win. Gotcha. That's pretty cool. Um, now, here's a kind of an off the wall question with with the different farms that have gotten this award. Um, have you noticed any trends in the past couple of years, like have 25 percent of the farms tried to pay more attention to um, going organic or wh what trends have you kind of noticed in this program or the farms that are recognized by this program? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I certainly think. One of the trends I have seen, I've only worked for a Farm Bureau for a little over a year and a half, but just in that time, one of the things I have have strived to do when I'm out visiting with our producers is to ask them, you know, hey, you know let them know, first of all, we're going to help tell their story, but is there any opportunity for them to do it? You know, what can we as Farm Bureau equip them with to take back to their community? So like we create farmer profiles on our website, they can download and take them with them. We do some videos on specific producers and the videos can be used at different presentations and whatnot, but taking that opportunity to, to figure out how they can share their story. Can they host a farm tour? So I'm, I've just seen a big trend in the farmer, once again, putting on that educator hat to say, you know, I'm going to open up my farm for you, or maybe I'm going to turn into a you pick operation. You know, maybe we can devote some of our land, you know, to being, a blueberry you pick, those have become super popular, especially in the middle part of the state. But, um, you know, just taking that opportunity to connect with the consumer. Farmers want the opportunity to explain, I'm not going to grow anything or do anything on my farm that would harm my own child. I want you to know that we have that shared value. I'm not going to do anything that harms your child either. And so it's very much, you know, this, we call it a trend, but it's really a work of the heart, in my opinion, because 
it's it's communicating this message and this shared value that um, I'm not only doing right by the land, but I'm also doing right by people. I care about the people that live in our state. I care about the people and the children that live in my own community down my own, you know, dirt road. So um, I think that's a very important, important fact. I would say technology is another big one. Um, I was on about 30 farms last year and saw a lot of farmers really taking to technology and adopting um, soil moisture probes is a perfect example. The department, the water management district, especially Swanee River Water Management District, they all have really great cost share programs, anywhere from 70 to 90 percent reimbursements on soil moisture probes. And those probes, you know, they have some limiting factors, everything in life does, but they do a wonderful job at helping you see how the water is moving into the ground. It does a wonderful job of pinpointing where you have different needs. Um, based on your program, you can even monitor nutrient movement. And so there's just really cool things with technology. And that's just one example that farmers are really starting to come around to. Um, you know, they're usually on top of the trends anyways, but technology I think has become more handheld and easy to digest. And so I think that's been an important factor as to why they've taken to it so easily. Gotcha. Yeah, almost every person or every production farmer that we've interviewed so far has been saying in the past couple of years, they've been trying to do more and more agro-tourism to get people into their farms, mm -hmm. which has been super fascinating. And they've mm -hmm. said that it's been such a positive experience that people can come into their farm and they're like, oh, I had no idea that this is how clean a farm is or how much you care for the environment or how much you care for your animals. So I've definitely seen a huge trend towards agro-tourism and it's been super cool. And also farmers use of technology like Snapchat, mm -hmm. social, uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, just kind of getting yeah, their yeah. message out there. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll share with you one of my favorite things that I get to experience pretty regularly on our CARES farm tours that we do across the state. And I'm sure farmers can even see it if they have a you pick operation is you will get someone who is very skeptical. They they get on the tour because they want to see where a farmer is messing up. And you can just tell that they're they're not they don't believe that what they're doing is right by the land or right by people. And by the end of the day, they leave a changed advocate for agriculture. And there is there is something so special about seeing that because it, I go back to that shared value they get there and they realize okay they're they're running their business their operation just like I would you know I, I want them to care about the environment and I can see that they are they have explained and they have showed me and I I see it firsthand and uh, for me there's just something very special about a consumer getting out on the farm and um, like I said, leaving, show, showing up skeptical, but leaving a changed advocate for agriculture. It's just a, a really special thing to, to be a part of. Exactly. That's so cool. Um, talk us through some of the sponsors that um, the CARES program has. I noticed on the, web, on the, on the website, mm -hmm. it's Farm Bureau Federation, Swanee River Partnership, Florida Department of Ag and Consumer Sciences mm -hmm. or Consumer Services. So just kind of mm -hmm. walk us through some of the partners that help out with the program. Certainly. So Farm Bureau partners with agencies, associations, businesses all across the state and for various reasons. Um, one of the most meaningful partners of our CARES program is that Suwannee River Partnership I mentioned earlier. The partnership is made up of regional agencies such as the Water Management District, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection, the Department of Ag, IFAS, different commodity associations and local businesses. And so, like, for our annual Swanee Care Celebration, we have more than 60 sponsors and partners that help make that event possible. And um, I personally truly enjoy partnering with our county farm bureaus and the extension offices to conduct farm tours, kind of like I just shared. But, um, you know, I'm a former high school ag teacher and FFA advisor, so there's, there's really nothing better than getting out on the farm and educating a group of people. Um, and seeing them leave changed, uh, it's just, and getting them around farmers. I mean, you and I both know they're just the kindest and most informative people, and you can really see all the care that they put into the land. And, you know, I can't not mention social media. It does a wonderful job at 
reaching tens of thousands of people and it does make a positive difference but um you know experiencing a farm firsthand our partners help make that happen i mean we reached almost 700,000 people with the cares program last year and farm bureau doesn't do that alone we um take time to build relationships with people and get them out across, you know in front of farmers that can really help educate them um, we all have that same mission in mind is to help get that clarity that you know farmers are doing right by the entire you know state of florida so right gotcha now can you kind of walk us through um some examples of some cares farms that have been recognized as having some great B bmps and just all around really good programs that have been recognized by florida farm bureau can you walk us through some programs that you've visited Certainly, and that's that's a very hard question because, like I said, I get to go on so many of them, and each one is special in their own right. And um, you know, last year I had the privilege to be, like I said, on about thirty different farms, and to represent Farm Bureau um, is a big a big deal to me personally. But um, you know, I've never I've never left a farm unhappy. I've left a farm uh, feeling very blessed and privileged to get to see what they're doing and all the care that they show to the environment. And, and that's what the CARES program is about, recognizing Florida's best environmental stewards. And I've seen some very impressive BMP programs in action. And, um, you know, whoever ends up listening to this podcast, really invite them to get out on their local farm and have a concert, a conversation uh, about BMPs and efforts that farmers take to protect natural resources. And it doesn't really matter the operation farmers are doing right by the environment and the first time I ever went to the panhandle I know that's up your way it was actually on a cotton and peanut farm out in Jay met a gentleman by the name of Mickey Diamond who has the best southern accent I've ever heard but uh Mr. Diamond he's a true pioneer of Florida agriculture and what was inspiring to see is that he partners with other local growers to farm each season and so essentially they all load up, they start at his farm and then move to the, each of the other farms. And he has been the one that has helped them learn about BMPs and begin to implement them. And ultimately they all work together and have reduced nutrient use by 30%, which not only saves them money, but it reduces the amount of nutrients that are at risk for ever re-entering our aquifer. And so by protecting our water quality, it's just a very big deal because that's all dry land farming for the most part. And so when there is a rain event, it pretty well saturates the ground. And so by reducing that nutrient use is a big deal. Um, I would say in the north central part of our state, uh, Blueberry Farm by the name of Florida Blue Farms with Ms. Brittany Lee. And they use a tailwater recovery system. And I've seen, a, seen several of those across the state. And they're just a really cool BMP and something really cool to see on a farm because they can recycle up to 70% of the water used to irrigate blueberries, 70%. I mean, that is, you're talking millions of gallons of water at that point. And, um, you know, I, I have a special place in my heart for cattle ranchers and met a wonderful lady by the name of Kelly Fulford down in Hillsborough County. She is one of our 2016 CARES recipients that we uh, ended up featuring in a highlight video and she leases 2,000 acres from Hillsborough County and through their environmental lands acquisition program uh, they allow her to raise beef cattle and implement a BMP program. She uses everything from rotational grazing um, to cross fencing to uh, monitoring, monitoring water quality but um, what's impressive about her operation is that because it's land leased through the county, they allow people to come out and trail ride on her ranch. And so these trail riders are permitted to go where her cattle are not permitted to go and graze and, and interact with. And so um, you talk about someone being a responsible land manager and an educator. She's one of the best that I have ever seen. And so, and, you know, those are just a few examples of things that I've seen over this last year and a half um, that just, they just meant a lot to me because you can see very easily that they're making a difference and 
and they're taking the time. You know, Brittany Lee, what's special about her is she gets on the local news station every week and does a different farm fact. And so by taking their practices and bringing them to life through educating other people is what has been so important to witness. But, you know, our state, we talked about how diverse it is, and we produce over 300 commodities. Most people in our industry know that. And so the opportunities to dial in water, nutrient, chemical use, and protect water quality, they're numerous. And I'm proud that Farm Bureau takes an active role in recognizing our producers and their efforts. Um, I'm also proud that we take an effort to educate the public. You know, our organization cares deeply about honoring our family's heritage while preparing for the future and adapting with the trends and taking action to ensure that our future in farming is successful. And it's definitely fulfilling to know that I play a very small role um, and that I've begun to care. You know, we kind of joke here at the office that Casey cares and it's very true. Um, and I certainly appreciate the opportunity to, to be on your podcast and share a little bit more about our program. Absolutely. Yeah. The CARES program sounds super, super cool. I mean, promoting um, best management practices within the ag industry and also recognizing those hardworking farmers that do that day in and day out without looking for recognition. They, and they've been doing it so long before really anybody really wanted them to do. That's super fascinating. Um, well, Casey, if people want to learn more about the CARES program or if they want to contact you, where, where should they go? Certainly. So thisfarmcares.org is our website. Uh, we also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. Uh, but on our website specifically, there is a contact page where you can submit a question. You can even send us a message via social media. And if you know how to Google Florida Farm Bureau, I'm sure you can find me that way as well. <laughs> gotcha. That's awesome. Well, Casey, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks, Trevor.